All right, today we're gonna to be going over a quick step-by-step -step guide on how to craft our high DPS late game spark body armor. So step one, we need to choose our base. We should be choosing between an astral plate or a vol regalia. It needs to be a minimum eye level of 84, but an eye level 86 plus is preferred. It must have shaper influence. So astral plate. This has high armor and it gives us plus 12 to all res and the implicit, which is nice. It's a very solid choice and it is quite easy to craft. However, coloring the sockets is very hard because we need to get five blue, one red, and astral plate leans heavily into getting red sockets. So to, to solve this, you would be using harvest crafts to change red into blue, and this can be really annoying to do. Volregalia, I actually think might be the better option, even though I went with Astral Plate. So Volregalia gives us energy shield, and this is good because as an Inquisitor specifically, our life regen also applies to our energy shield regen. So we're going to have a lot better regen in maps, and we're also going to have a, just a bigger like health pool. So for this reason, I think Valregali is better for the top end. However, if you don't have lots of endurance charges from those jewels that I'm using, and if you don't have, for example, like the Watcher's Eye that I'm using that gives us fizz damage reduction, we also have quite low armor, and Astral Plate solves that. So it's sort of like, what is your weakness and what do you want to improve on? So for that reason, both of these are very valid choices, and I don't think you'll be too disappointed with either choice, regardless of the gear you have right now. So step two, we want to take the uh, Shaper base we just bought and roll T1 spell critical chance, which is 1.1 to 1.5%. This is extremely easy to do. You can either use Harvest Reforge Crit or we can use death fossils, which are two chaos per try. And it's very easy to roll this. So once you roll T1 spell critical chance, you must check if the item has one more shaper mod and it must have one more, not two more or not zero more, it must be one. And right here is a graphic of all the shaper mods. So it must have one of these mods as well as the spell critical strike chance. So once you're sure that you have the spell critical chance, uh, the spell critical strike chance, and only one of these mods. Like, make sure you double triple check. Once you've triple checked, now you use the Maven Orb on the item, and this has a fifty percent chance of success. Because so what a Maven Orb does, and actually this is now called an Orb of Dominance. So, yeah, um, once you have the Orb of Dominance, I should be saying, you slam it on the item and it will remove one of those mods and then it will upgrade the other one. And we're trying to elevate the critical strike chance to 1.6 to 2%. This is very, very big, very big for a DPS. So you have a 50% chance and if you fail, you just start at the beginning. You know, it's pretty easy. Eventually you will hit it. Let's go on to step three. Step three is to buy an eye level 80 plus redeemer base this costs one chaos, and we use alterations and augments to spam until we hit the suffix 10% chance to gain a frenzy charge on hit. It takes approximately 250 tries to get this suffix. And uh, alternatively, you can buy a redeemer base that already has chance to gain frenzy charge on hit. I do not recommend this because if you buy it, it has to only have one redeemer mod and you're basically guaranteed that if you're all aug spamming although you're not definitely guaranteed it like do check that the other mod you have is not a redeemer one but um yeah i it's, it's cheaper to alt aug it anyways and it's not very hard so i just suggest following these steps once you succeed on this we move on to step four so you have both those body armors in your inventory you take an Awakener Orb and you apply the Redeemer stat onto the Shaper base. And if you haven't done this before, what you do is you click the Awakener's Orb and then you click on the Redeemer chest 
and then you click a third time on the shaper chest and it will destroy the redeemer chest and it will add that mod onto the shaper chest and it will reroll all the other mods. And at the end of this video, I will post a short video of like me actually doing the craft. All right, so step five. Now we're gonna have guaranteed spell critical traits. We're gonna have guaranteed spell critical strike chance and chance to gain a frenzy charge on hit as two of the suffixes. And we might have a third random suffix, but now we gotta craft the prefixes. So if we don't already have a high life roll and an open prefix, we're gonna wanna use TFT and buy the craft keep suffixes, reroll prefixes. The ideal scenario is we want to have a high life roll on the armor and an open prefix, which we use to craft the Gravisius craft, gain 12 to 14% of maximum life as maximum energy shield. And we can keep using keep suffix, reroll prefixes until we get the scenario we want. Now, this graphic here is my armor. I used keep suffix reroll prefix once and there was no there was no life, but I didn't want to keep rolling it. So I thought, you know, I'm just going to craft on maximum life. We're not going to bother with the Gravisius craft. Maybe in the future, I might improve the armor because we can always go back and do this again. But uh, yeah, it's up to you how good you want to make the prefixes. This was good enough for me. All right. Step six, you six link it if necessary, and then you're done. All right, so now we're gonna move on to a short clip of me going through all the processes, and then we'll end this video, and I'll give a couple alternative unique options if this craft is a little bit too intimidating for you. So as you can see, we failed our first two orbit dominance attempts, and it's 50-50 chance every time, so that's just part of the process. There we go. We hit it on our third try. So we already rolled the frenzy charge on hit with alterations. So we're going to click the awakener orb on the redeemer chest first. Then we're going to click it on the astral plate second. Damn, we only have 12 to maximum life. Looks like we're going to have to go on to the last step. So I already have the reforge keeping all suffixes in my harvest bench. So we're just going to use the one I already have. Damn, we didn't get high life, but at least we took off the, the tiny life roll and we can craft our own. All right, now let's quickly go over some alternative spark body armor options. The one I would suggest is Impulse's Broken Heart. It has decent stats and it gives us explosions, which are really fun. Um, we're gonna be spending most of our time mapping and explosions are good for mapping. So you can't really go wrong with this armor Although your DPS will not be nearly as good as it as if you go the armor I suggest crafting. Now, the other body armor you're going to see people wear is the incandescent heart. So if you want to go this armor, you're going to want to use probably two Call of the Brotherhood rings to convert all of our lightning damage to cold. And then you might want to use anomalous cold to fire support to convert most of this cold damage into fire because this body armor gives us extra chaos damage based on elemental damage and if we convert three times it's taking that extra chaos damage for all three elements and we'll have a lot of extra damage. Now there is a downside to this armor in that we take some elemental damage as chaos damage to negate this downside, you have to cap your chaos res at 75%. However, we can also turn this downside into an upside if we go chaos inoculation. So chaos inoculation is when you go to one life and then you take zero chaos damage. So basically you're just turning your build into an energy shield build and it will mean changing all your gear to energy shield, which is gonna be annoying, but that would be the primary reason you'd use this armor. Because then you're just mitigating a bunch of Ellie damage because you take zero chaos damage. But just 
Keep in mind, if you do switch to an incandescent heart, most of the people who are using this armor are going to be doing group play and they're going to have an aura bot supporting them. So if you're trying to copy someone's build who's using an incandescent heart and they have an aura bot and you don't, mapping might feel extremely bad because all their gear is going to be oriented towards having that aura bot supporting them. All right, I think that wraps up this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.